Well, that's fucked. Let's talk about that. Okay, so, um, let me fill you guys in. We were trying really hard to have the AK-50 V5 done before SHOT Show, and this is going to be the pre-production model that everything is functioning, firing, uh, cycling multiple rounds, doing mag dumps out of. This is going to be really the big one. Everything we learned on the V1, um, we, we put together in the computer a hundred different times, and we, we ran all the different stuff, and this is what we came up with. So we finally got the receiver back and the bolt carrier back, which are the two pieces that uh, we were waiting for, but I, I noticed it last night, and uh, we definitely confirmed it today, and we started running measurements on it. The rails are very warped. The gap between the buffer and the receiver side is 179 thousandths. That should be a fitted piece. That should You should have to kind of push that in there. Do you want to try to do anything with this one call first? Oh, I, I'm definitely wanting to call them before we, we try to straighten it in any way. It's a prototype, if we can get it to work, there's a lot of reasons why I wouldn't be happy with that as a production piece, but a production animal is a totally different beast. All right. Um, right now, I just want to make sure we can get it to where it functions. We didn't think this was going to be easy, did we? I thought it'd be a little easier. <laughs> Me too. I thought it was going to be a bring it in here, let's put the shit together and go test it. That's always how it works out in my head. So why casting? So I figured I owe you guys an explanation on this considering, like I said, I'm one of the biggest guys who rails against cast bolts, cast trunnions, everything like that on a typical AK. This gets a big fucking fail. The reason why I am a big proponent of using forged trunnions and things like that because I don't think casting necessarily has the strength or the longevity to hold up over the abuses of what you're going to put an AK trunnion through. <laughs> The reason I did it on the AK-50 for the prototype parts is because these are non-stressed parts. So the receiver, actually, we redesigned it. A one-piece milled receiver on an AK has the actual locking lugs in the receiver. This does not. See, this is just going to have a hole up front where the barrel extension is going to be pressed in. So the barrel extension is the same reason why an AR-15 can have an aluminum upper. It's because there's no locking lugs in it. The locking lugs are in the barrel extension. This is machined A2 tool steel. And what this is, is this is going to be uh, screwed in to the barrel right here. There you go. And you can set your head space by how deep you thread it. Because the bolt is going to come in and twist and lock on that, that triangular lug uh, right there. So none of the interlocking parts that actually contain the explosion of the gun are going to be cast. We're actually, uh, there's so little stress on the AK-50 receiver. Because all this does is holds the fire control group, it holds the magazine, and it holds that barrel extension into place and pinned through the side. And then it just provides a rail for the bolt carrier to slide on. We were thinking we might even be able to make this out of aluminum eventually. So there's really not a whole lot of stress on this, nothing compared to a normal AK receiver. So I figured I owed you guys a little bit of an explanation as to why we thought it was okay to cast this stuff. I'm being honest with you guys, because that's what um, I don't I don't like. I, I didn't ever want to turn this into a series that was just a big ad for the AK-50. I wanted to show you guys how um, how difficult it is to do some of this shit and how frustrating it can be and, you know, go with you guys on the highs and the lows. So showing you guys all the shit that's going right and, we, you know, we freak the hell out and have a good time. And then all the times like this where it's just uh, we don't know what the future looks like. So, um yeah, you guys will know exactly what I know. I'll put it that way. So we're just going to get lunch with the crew and see what we can do. I called them. Oh, okay. And uh, I'm going to send a fuckload of pictures to them, basically show like, hey, uh, you know, the bolt carrier looked awesome, but our rails are warped like an eighth of an inch out of alignment. So that's, that's a big fucking problem. So this is kind of frustrating, guys. Um, these are the last two parts we were working on. We've already got our barrel extension done. Uh, we just have to cut our barrel, but the barrel's pretty much done. Everything's threaded together. We practically almost have it for headspace. Got to finish the bolt, but I mean, everything is pretty much done other than the finishing work that needs to be done with this. So I called our supplier for this stuff, and uh, we're trying to work out a solution, but I don't think this is going to be done by SHOT Show, which sucks, guys, but that sucks, guys, but at the same time, uh, you know what? We're going to get through it like we always have. This whole project's been setback after setback after setback after setback. And you know what? You push past three, 400 of those, and uh, you know what? When the gun goes into full production and we sell an ass load of them, it just felt, it feels uh, that much sweeter because we knew what we did. Would you agree with that, Chris? Oh, yeah. yeah he's nodding his head. Well, guys, that wasn't exactly the pre-shot AK-50 update I was hoping to give you, but um, right now it's time to go home and rethink a couple of things.
Yeah, smack the thread inside on there. Yeah, that'll do well. That'll make it work better. Uh, what the fuck was that pose? I was like, I was going for like samurai uh, thing, and then I went like gay baton twirler. 